we've got the amazing Nosipo. Woohoo! He's coming to share with us. Nosipo, I just want to say about Nosipo, I love Nosipo. Every time I see Nosipo and she comes into the church, I just get so happy. I get so much joy because she's just so sassy, so full of love and fire and power. Incredible worship leader. And she's got an amazing, amazing, um, just heart for God and just beautiful, intimate relationship with Jesus. So I wanted her just to come and share on that with you guys this morning and how intimacy is just so, so valuable uh, in our uh, pursuit of revival, in our pursuit of the supernatural. So can we give our best young life welcome for Nusipo as she comes to share. We stand. Woo! Hi guys. So hey, this is something new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we just we just gonna have a good time with Jesus. That's all that, that's all I know to do, honestly. I don't know what's gonna happen. But I've got some friends who also love Jesus and so we just gotta love Jesus together. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm like this now. <laughs> Let's just, let's pray. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you that we just get to be fully ourselves here, that there's nothing to prove, that we don't have to get anything right. We actually just get to enjoy you and be with you. And so I thank you that you want to be with us. You really, really want to be with us right now. And I thank you that you are speaking and so the only agenda here is to be with you. So thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're coming in close. That you're awakening every heart to you. That we get to go after something new in you, Jesus. Yeah, we just love you, Father. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So I'm talking about intimacy with the Father, hey, intimacy with God, which is quite a, a big thing, hey? Like, that's like real life stuff that you have to walk out every day. Like, you don't just have a moment of intimacy, like a nice one in worship. You sing your song and you're like, oh, I feel so good. And then you kind of just move on with your life. You have to carry on meeting him and seeing him and going after him. Otherwise, he's just going to be that guy we meet on a Friday night, that guy we meet on a Sunday. And so I'm interested in, in living a life where he is my every day, he is my every moment. And um, yeah, I just want to know him. So today, <laughs> okay, we're going to focus in on, <laughs> on two scriptures, John 15 around verse 4 to 6, and Song of Songs 2, and I'm going to read them out of the Passion Translation. That's the thing, I'll tell you what, if you want to be intimate with God, you better get yourself a Passion Translation, because that thing is going to fire you up, okay? Like, it's not just for people who are like creatives and like poetic language, like just read it in a, in a new way, catch another expression and let it come alive in you because I'll tell you what the Bible wasn't my favorite thing <laughs> before the passion translation like I read it because we had to I'm like okay but I'll tell you what when you find a translation that works for you you will want nothing but to read it and be with Jesus so get yourself a passion okay um so basically so today we're gonna there's like three major parts okay so I'm going to explain intimacy as being a choice, being an invitation. Then we're going to have like a guided encounter moment and then look at some more practical ways to pursue intimacy. Are you guys keen? Okay, so let's, let's, let's read. Let's read John 15. So if you have your Bibles or your phones or whatever... 
you need. Okay, so John 15 verse 4 in the Passion Translation says this. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stem, whoa, sorry, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. Hectic. Okay. And so when I was preparing for this, I felt the Father land me in that scripture because he wanted to reveal that intimacy was a call to a fruitful life. That if you want your life to matter, to mean something, you have to be connected. You have to stay in the vine because he's interested in staying with you. And so it's an invitation, it's a choice for you to choose that life of fruitfulness. And I'll explain that in a bit. Let's go to Song of Songs 2. Two verse 10. So this is the bridegroom king, Jesus, who's coming for us, his bride. This is what he's saying. Arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling. Come along with me. I have come as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended. And the season of hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? Let's, let's end it there at 13. And so that second portion of scripture is also another call to, to intimacy, a call to be revived, to be rejuvenated, and then be prepared to move out and do great works and see God do great works in you and through you. So that's what we're focusing on, intimacy being a call to a fruitful life and it being a choice. So with it being a choice, that means that you choose how to love God. You choose how to love him, you choose that you want to love him. And so another person's methods of intimacy won't give you lasting fruit or a rich history, but they can definitely inspire you to want more of God. And so you can be inspired until he whets your, your appetite for more, but you have to be willing to go beyond just that person's revelation or that initial inspiration. You have to make it personal. You have to make him your God. You have to make him your father. You have to make him your friend. And so intimacy being our own, our own choice means that our experience and our expression of it will look different from the person next to us. Because only you can love God and worship him the way that you do. And I say this every time I, I'm with my team and we lead worship, I say, only you can give God what you have to give today. Nobody else can move his heart like you. And the moment you begin to, begin to believe that, that no one on the earth can love God like you do, you actually realize how powerful you are. That you are powerful enough to move his heart and please him. And when we believe that, we go on to believe that he genuinely wants to receive our love that he genuinely wants to be with us and not just be with us in the room and we just, oh, some nice imagined being or oh, some nice feeling, but that he wants to be with us and know us closely, that he wants to be your best friend, your father. And so for me personally, that's where it changed. 
where God went from being some imagined being to really being my father, to really being my friend, to being a lover, because I decided that there must, there must be more. And I made it my mission that I will stop at nothing until I had that more. And I have not arrived. Each day I'm like, there's more. If you say your mercies are new every morning, that means they're new. That means I want something new now. And so I'd heard about a God who loved me, who sent his son to die for me and have to give me eternal, abundant life. And then I chose to give him my life as an act of thanksgiving and vowed to love him back. I chose to believe that he wanted my love. And because he wouldn't have paid an immeasurable price if he didn't want to know me, if he didn't want to call me his own. Like who would pay a large sum of money for something that you could never enjoy, for something that you didn't deem valuable or worthy. And so intimacy for me became a response to his heart that has been on display the whole time. A response to the price that he paid, not because I owe him or because I'm in debt, but because I've been so overcome by his love that I know nothing else but to respond. And so I guess my goal here is to just reveal the Father just as Jesus walked the earth and did to bring you close to him, for you to see him clearly, for you to feel him, and give you a choice to respond. So my only request is that you'd be fully yourself, that you'd open up and be hungry for something new. I think the fact that you're in the room says that you're already hungry, because you wouldn't have come if you didn't want to be with him, right? So engage all your senses, bring all, all of your heart and humanity, and... We're just going to go after Jesus and cultivate some intimacy this morning. Does that sound good? Okay, I'm going to get my friend Jesh to come and help me out. <laughs> okay, so I actually need you to get out of your seats for this one. Find a spot anywhere in the room, up here in the front. I'll pull this back in a corner, wherever. Oh, hello wherever you feel comfortable and just lay down, kneel, whichever. Actually, no, everybody lay down. You need enough laying down space. Okay. Make sure you have some space. Like, it's not a sleepover with your mates. It's not a team nap, okay? It's not a team nap. So have some space there. Leave some room for Jesus there in that corner. It's a bit hectic there. Okay. Just relax, let your body just sink into the ground, sink into that carpet. Feel your back on the carpet, your legs, everything, your whole body, feel it on the ground.
now while we are in that place, we're just going to engage our imaginations. And we're going to create a world where Jesus can come and meet us in. And so by creating this world, we're going to be creating a point of reference point of reference for heaven you're going to be creating a secret place with him and you're going to have to be specific and engage all your senses so whatever place that you you love to be in whether it's in the ocean or or wherever you like to be I want you to begin to imagine a world and you create it what are the colors in that world what is the season in that world what does the sky look like really see it and once you see it begin to fill it sound what are you hearing is it birds chirping and singing what is happening in that world what does being in that world make you feel thoughts to you, all his words towards you are loving, they are kind. And so even if you just hear I love you coming from the sound of my voice, that is still Jesus.
So what he says must be loving, must be kind, must be encouraging. Let those words matter to you. of the fact that his majesty has come in close has come to meet you on the ground I want you to respond tell him thank you tell him you love him respond to the words that you felt the words that you saw or the words that you heard That you've longed to hear, something that you've longed to receive. Let it then be the words of somebody who loves you and knows you and sees you. Let them matter, let them go deep, let them nourish you.
when you get home later, or whenever you find a moment, you're gonna go and write down that encounter, what happened, and you're gonna remember this moment. And if nothing happened, go write nothing happened. Be honest. Um, you don't have to conjure up something here or create something that's not there. You will experience as much as you're willing to engage with. So you can go take that home if that was not your vibe. Go tell Jesus. <clears throat> don't talk about that in guided encounter thing. <laughs> be honest because he knows you. So what's the point of, of hiding with him and trying to be somebody that you're not? So what that was... practices of communion and connection with God that you can engage in that I've learned to do but I mean sometimes you don't always have somebody guiding you through it and so the best thing is to imagine the world and create the world and don't be afraid to to imagine it and create it because our father is the creator and so if he was willing to engage his imagination in making creation and in making us why can't we engage our imaginations and if we made in his image as he says in his word that means that we have his mind that means that we value beauty the way that he does and so don't be afraid to engage your imagination because it's redeemed because it, it is holy and you are capable of making beautiful things because that is who you are and when you're willing to engage your imagination in that world when you're willing to yield your imagination to Holy Spirit you're actually letting heaven's reality invade your space whatever it is that you love to do like even now just think about that thing that you love to do like what is so fun for you when you begin to invite him into it you're going to see that he actually wants to be with you and that he loves to have fun with you and even in that skill he wants to upskill you in it he wants you to be great in it it's not just some stupid hobby it could be a very fully fledged passion that he wants to actually upskill you in and then in day-to-day -day life 
intimacy looks like inviting him into the things that we also don't like doing, like chores and things. Anyone who's like me, I hate washing dishes. And I have a big family. And there are always dishes. And I'm just like, oh, the wheel, Jesus. These dishes, I don't know. You can make a miracle happen here. You can <laughs> let them wash themselves and pack themselves. But when I invite him into that, it becomes an act of love and of service to my family. It becomes an act of worship to him. Because I'm convinced he wants to meet me in everything, even in the things I hate. In school, it used to be schoolwork, homework. I'm just like, ah, really, can we not finish this at school? But then I consider the price my parents paid. And I consider the future the Father's leading me into, and I begin to invite him into those things. And then we invite him in relationships and the people that we love and the people that we interact with. When we seek God's thoughts for our friends, we're cultivating intimacy. When we actually want to know our friends and love them well. We all have that one friend who just loves us really well. We're like, okay, you actually probably need to stop because this is too much. But yet when you go home, you're like, man, I am so loved. And so that's cultivating intimacy and relationship. But one of the easiest ways for me to cultivate intimacy is also in worship. To sing him songs, to sing in tongues, and make it just all about Jesus. When you remind yourself of who he is, he comes and reminds you of who you are. We are one, we are connected, and I can't escape him. And you guys are already worshippers. I love it when I come to you though there's a youth event because you all just come in hungry and worshipping. And maybe that's the only rhythm of intimacy you know right now. That's okay. Keep going. Keep singing. Even if you're not a singer. I don't know. Beatbox, rap, clap your hands. Make a sound that is authentically you. That is worship. And then in reading your Bible, you're also cultivating intimacy because you're inviting Holy Spirit to come and enlighten the words. And that's what I was saying about finding, finding a translation that works. And another way of cultivating intimacy is praying. And it's not a on your knees, close eyes, hands together, but it's a conversation all day. Wherever you are. So the, the point of, of all those methods of cultivating intimacy is so that through it all you would build trust with him in the familiar build trust with him in the spaces that you love to be in because he wants to be in them with you when you meet him in your space and you practice that until he leads you to a new place so we all dream of more but let's trust him and let him satisfy us in the now, in what we have now, in what looks familiar. And again, it's your choice. You can take it at your own pace because he is so patient and he is so willing. Take it at your pace until he overwhelms you so much by his face, by his person, that you actually have no choice but to go in for more. That's, that's what I want. Where I'm so overwhelmed, where I'm so overtaken, that I'm just like, oh man, there's more, I must keep going that space you have to pay attention to who you're becoming the whole time through that I was saying be aware of how you feel or what's going on because you have to be aware of who you're becoming because intimacy is what transforms you intimacy is what breaks lies and loneliness and breaks insecurities intimacy is where you are liberated and also equipped for whatever you have to face that day, for whatever battle that you have. And if that word intimacy, you still kind of don't understand it. Intimacy, intimacy is basically just friendship. It's friendship with God. Being close. And so growing in intimacy is growing in that relationship. And once you've encountered Jesus, then you've encountered Father and Spirit, because Jesus is our entry point 
He is the way. And the more you mature in your relationship with God, then you'll find that each person, each personality of God, of the Trinity, will become clearer and better to you. And each season might look different where the one is more dominant, but it's all God, it's all Jesus, it's all spirit, it's all intimacy, because it's for, it's for your nourishment. It's so that his nature can be established in you. It's so that we can become more aware and more confident of his nearness, of his presence with us. And who doesn't want to mature in God? Who doesn't want to keep knowing more? I pray that you would be encouraged that when you wake up each morning you would look to Jesus thank him for the day tell him that you love him that you choose him and ask him what the day holds and a promise that each day holds is his mercy it says in Lamentations 3 22 the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness and even that even if that's all you receive that day is mercy you go show me what your mercy looks like let me receive it because when you receive that you'll remember that he loves you and that come what may you are actually held in friendship in close familiarity and if you can be real and vulnerable and honest through it all then you've won you are intimate when you can be yourself and hide nothing. If you already sees everything, might as well give him everything because he's so safe. He's safe and I feel like he wants some people to know that today, that he's safe. He's not afraid of anything that you can bring. So just live an unfiltered friendship with him. Just as you'd walk with somebody you know, live that unfiltered friendship with him. time so I'm just gonna pray <laughs> oh Jesus we love you we just love you Jesus and I thank you that every time we gather and we come to see more of you that you show up and I thank you that even when it may be beyond our mind's ability to comprehend it it's not beyond our ability to experience and to feel and even if we leave today with just a feeling that we'd come back and give you that feeling say what was that that we'd ask questions that you would awaken curiosity in you Jesus that we'd keep finding more that we'd keep finding a new side because if the angels sing holy and keep finding a new side surely we have even more to see and to know because you gave it all for us Father so we thank you for the invitation into intimacy would you lead us in a unique expression of it in our own lives that we would have stories to tell of how we met you and how our lives have been transformed by your face by your glory Jesus would you make us lovers would you make us worshippers would you create praise in us would you create worship in us that all we could do was respond to you Jesus and I just bless your your beautiful children to keep walking with you and keep knowing you and grow in history with you rich history father that changes everything for generations to come amen 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 thanks my friend let's give it up for Nasipo and Jesh as rock feels like I want to go sleep now in a good way. <laughs> in a good way, like, in a good way. Thanks, guys. So, I just want to open it up again to any questions. Um, I think, okay, so somebody's, so just for the camera, um, 
somebody's in a position of authority over you and they're asking too much of you, how would you say no to that? Um, I think like if it comes to, if we're talking about parents, I would say you need to have a, a, a brave conversation with them at some point and just express what's going on and how you're feeling and saying, I think it just feels like you're asking a bit too much from me. Um, if it's like, I'm trying to think what other example there would be, like a teacher, um, I don't know. It depends. Can I, I like, is any way to be more specific? Uh, I think a, a, a lot of that stuff comes down to like communication and communicating your heart really well. So um, if it is a person in authority, and if they're in true authority, which means that they're essentially there to serve and see the best you become all that you meant to be, they should be able to listen to you in a healthy way. So if I come to you, let's say I'm an, I'm an authority over you, and I'm asking way too much for you, and you say to me, Sean, like, this is just too much. I can't handle it. I got this going on, this going on, this going on. Uh, my capacity is just stretched. If I'm in a good place of authority, like, I will hear that, and I'll respond in a good way. Um, but I think it takes communication. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know. Communicate. Be bold at communicating, yeah. That's what I'd say. So how do you hear God clearly? How do you hear God speak to you? It feels like you're asking Him or speaking to Him a lot and not getting anything in return. Um, hey, to be honest, like that takes time. I remember at your age, I wouldn't, um, I was exactly the same place. Just as if God was like a vending machine. I'd come to Him with my, my list of like things that I needed from God. I mean, like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, and then I would get frustrated because I'm like, oh, why don't you talk to me? But I'm like, um, there's no relationship here. It's just one-way conversation that's happening all the time. So just what we were doing now, cultivate a place of intimacy personally, I would say. Uh, what I would do is, um, so at my old house when I was in, living with my parents, we had this old wooden floors. And um, for like 45 minutes, an hour each night, I would turn on some worship music and I would get, and I would call it the wooden river, and I'd imagine this river running through my house. I was a river of the Spirit of God, and I would just get down on my knees, and I would just like soak in the river and let the river just like wash over me. <laughs> so weird, I don't know. So, but uh, I'd sit there, honestly, I, and I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't pray. I wouldn't be like, God, I need this, I need this. Most of the times I would just lie there, and I would let the Spirit of God just touch me and minister to me. And I felt like in those times, like, I started to hear him really clearly. I would have encounters. Um, a big thing that I would also do is read my Bible. A huge thing, I'd say, which is our generation, your generation, really struggle to do as well. That's why I get the Passion Translation. It's incredible. The other good one is the Message, the Message Bible. I will say there are paraphrases, um, so they aren't, but that's getting, I don't know if that's getting really religious, but um, they aren't like, they're basically they're not... Um, Actually, I won't get into it. Just read them. They're really good. Just read them. The message and the passion. Just read them. At your age, read them. Like, you need to get the word inside of you. So, so for instance, I would get into the river, get out of the river, into my bed, and I would read my Bible. And as I was reading my Bible, I wouldn't just read. I would say, Holy Spirit, like, I know that these words are alive and that you can still speak. So speak to me. And then I would read. And sometimes I'd be reading and I would hear God's voice saying, do you believe what you just read? I'd be like, whoa, and I would just be in tears a lot of the time because it would talk about like healing the sick, raising the dead. Um, so that would be it, bro, like cultivate intimacy. Um, and somebody asked this earlier, but if you feel like you hear the voice of God, step out. Because uh, a lot of people struggle. They're like, is that my voice? Is that God's voice? The only way you'll ever know is if you step out. And as you find, as you step out, um, you'll understand if it is God or not. And the more and more and more you do it, the more you're going to discover this is how God speaks to me and this is actually my voice. And it doesn't happen once or twice. It's honestly over like months, sometimes years of like constantly stepping out and hearing God's voice. So yeah, hope that helps. Totally. That, bro, that's where I would say just step out. Rather err, err on the side of thinking that it's God. And rather step out. So sometimes I'll be praying for someone and I'm like, hey, do you have a sore shoulder? Because that's what I have the thought. And the person's like, no. I'll be like, okay, cool. Thank you. Praise Jesus. You've got a good shoulder. And then, um, 
And then I would just know, and this is, this is it, as, as I would go on, I would realize when I picture something like this or have these feelings, the more and more I do it, then I would realize, okay, that's me. But then sometimes I'd step out and I'd get right. And I'd be like, okay, cool, so that's God there. And I'd do it again, and I'm like, that voice is familiar. I've heard that before, and I was right. So I'll step out again. You might be wrong, but you might be right. And I step out more and more, and I realize, and now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, cool, I know how God speaks to me. It looks a certain way, it feels a certain way, and I go with it, and most of the time it's God. So that's what I encourage you with, bro. And God is speaking to you. He is. Like, those thoughts, and it is, it's like that. It's a small, it's a still small voice. A lot of the time we think it's thoughts, but I would say take those things and believe, okay, it's God, and step out. And a lot of the time, you're going to fail because it's not God, and that's okay. And you've got to be willing to fail, uh, you've got to be willing to get over that fear and just keep on going. Anyone else? Got like a few more minutes. Go for it. <laughs> so I read this thing this morning, which actually had me on the ground. It said, he, <laughs> right? I'm not even going to say who it's by, in case I get it wrong. <laughs> so it said, those who know they are loved are brave. And I was like, what? And so this whole thing of when you know who you are and you know that you're loved, you can then step out and take the risks because you can't fail. You can't fail when you're in love. And so that's why you can step out and then grow in history and grow in, in knowing his voice. It doesn't have to be a loud, audible one. It could have been a picture, a sound, anything that evokes something good. If you're hearing something that's good and encouraging, it's mostly God. If it's not, then you'll be like, that's definitely not him. He is only kind. Yeah. He is only loving. And so you keep pursuing those thoughts that keep revealing who you know him to be. Yeah. That's it. And I would just say, like, I was the same place was starting out. I'm like, I got, I'm frustrated because I want to hear so clearly. I'm like, oh, Jesus, just speak to me like this. But I want to tell you guys, it's not a quick fix for this stuff. Like, seriously, it's not. It, it, it is. It's time. It's relationship. And it's cultivating something personally. And you'll get better and better at it. I won't lie. You will. <laughs>